Hi, I'm Dan Bricklin. Back in the late 1970s, I had an interesting design problem. My friend Bob and I were trying to build a program that would let you create and update computer versions of what was usually done by hand, spreadsheets of numbers and words with calculations and formatting. This is a paper spreadsheet used by my father in the family printing business. And here are some tables printed in an old book with school data. That's how it was usually done before our VisiCalc program and before what I was trying to automate with computerized recalculation. A major challenge was figuring out how to fit everything needed onto the limited space of the screen. Some computers had a screen 80 characters wide, but my first target, the Apple II, had only 40. We ended up using a combination of scrolling areas, synchronized locked panes, status areas, a formula bar, and more. It worked quite well. Later electronic spreadsheet programs, like Lotus 123, kept the same general layout. Commands in those days were all issued using a keyboard. As graphical interfaces entered the picture, additional areas were added to the display to hold buttons and menus to click. Multiple sheet capability brought in a row for tabs. Still, the general idea of our original layout has stayed the same for 35 years. Today's touch control devices have brought in new challenges. You need larger areas for command buttons since fingertips need more space than mouse pointers, and the screens are smaller than those optimized for a mouse. For example, the iPhone screen is back to almost Apple II-like constraints for reasonable sized characters. A new dominant design of how to lay out a spreadsheet's components and which mixture of pop-ups and slide-ins to use has yet to emerge. I use this history as a little background for an issue I'd like to discuss. A hot area in website design the last couple of years has been responsive web design. This refers to a web design approach aimed at crafting sites that automatically provide an optimal viewing experience with a minimum of panning and scrolling across a wide range of devices such as smartphones, tablets, and desktops. The poster child for this started out as the Boston Globe's website, which continues to be used as an example. What I haven't seen discussed as much is how we should design responsive apps implemented in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and meant for data entry, analysis, and control, as opposed to web sites meant for reading. Responsive apps do exist, especially in native code. For example, on iOS, Apple lets the developer flag universal apps where the same app automatically adapts to the differences between the smaller screen of an iPhone and the larger screen of an iPad. An awful lot of those apps are quite similar on both devices, not taking as much advantage of the larger screen as you might want. Dashboard applications like this one for stock tracking often add more differences between screen sizes, as well as differences in portrait versus landscape orientation. For applications that are used heavily for data entry and analysis, or for the controlling of various devices and displays by people from factory workers to disc jockeys, efficient use of the screen with appropriate controls is very important. These are not just simple, cool-looking apps. Two-dimensional layout is important for serious, productive applications. I ran into an unusual example when creating my NoteTaker HD iPad app that captures handwritten digital ink. I needed to vary the layout not only for portrait versus landscape orientation and different editing modes, but also for users who write with their left hand and with their wrist above the stylus tip. They needed writing areas at the very top of the screen and the command buttons at the bottom, the opposite of the more common wrist below configuration. Layout matters to usability. I built a custom layout specifying system to help me get this behavior on iOS. The problem is compounded for web apps. These are coded in HTML5, and like web sites, you'd like one code base to work for as many different devices as possible. Unlike plain websites, there is much more interaction. Long scrolling text, like in a newspaper, is not the dominant component with just a few simple navigation controls or links out. Often, the techniques used for responsive websites, like media queries and a simple grid, may not be sufficient or even appropriate. Often, more coding-intensive techniques need to be used, depending upon the framework.
I'd like to see more discussion of the different control schemes and how to vary the layout under different conditions, such as screen size and orientation for native apps, but especially for HTML5 ones. Apps are often implemented in HTML5 specifically because they are usually easier to write once to run everywhere. In addition to responsive web design for websites, I think we need to be concerned with responsive app layout for apps. I think a little digression here will help. I ran into this problem myself recently. I'm CTO of Alpha Software, and I was building this simple expense tracking app to demonstrate our Alpha Anywhere app development system. Alpha Anywhere lets you create and deploy mobile and desktop HTML5 business applications. It automatically generates HTML5 that makes use of a JavaScript and CSS framework, much as you might build a website by hand, except with a lot less work in coding. It can also produce the server-side code for business logic and connection to databases and services. In this case, I was initially only working on the client-side user interface. I ended up with these simple variations, all running from the same static files coming from a web server and shown in full-screen browsers. Initially, it was hard to specify those automatic variations without manually adding lots of custom JavaScript. I then worked with the developers of the Alpha Anywhere app building system as they designed and implemented new features to make constructing the app easier. Seeing how it's now done will make it easier to understand what type of responsiveness I think we need to expect in our web apps. Alpha Anywhere lets you rapidly build the user interface out of a wide variety of controls such as buttons, lists, and maps. It gives you different types of containers to organize those controls. While building, you manipulate these containers and the controls within them in a tree and set their attributes with property sheets, something comfortable for most developers. At any point, you can include custom JavaScript and CSS, but we try to minimize the need to do that in most common cases. For our case here, the interesting containers are called panels. They may be organized in panel layout containers that can size and display one or more of the panels that they contain. A panel layout can be controlled programmatically by the developer to explicitly show or hide panels, or they can be set to automatically show and hide panels based upon what fits in various sizing criteria. The showing and hiding may be animated in various ways, and panel layouts may be nested. Another type of container is the absolute layout container. This lets the developer forego the normal linear flow of controls and explicitly set size and position using a what-you-see-is-what-you-get drag-and-drop interface. These metaphors let you create all sorts of configurations that fit nicely on a display, even as the orientation changes and without knowing explicit screen sizes in advance. What they don't do is respond to differences that would require changes in the parameters of the layouts, such as whether they are laid out from left to right versus top to bottom, or which panels should be explicitly hidden even though they could fit. To add this type of capability, Alpha Anywhere now has a responsive layout dialog. It is a list of rules you specify, such as these that differentiate between various screen sizes and orientations. The rules are checked at startup and whenever the screen size or orientation changes. For each rule, there is a series of actions that will be performed. These actions can change the properties of various containers. I find that having all of these organized together this way makes polishing the layouts easier than a more programmatic programming style. Seeing this particular capability should explain some of the types of patterns I think would be helpful to share among developers. When does a top-to-bottom flow work better versus a side-to-side -side flow? What should be hidden? How should particular tool palettes be displayed? As overlays or pushed in or as pop-ups? Should they be partial or full screen? What types of controls work well on which screen sizes and in which situations? What should you change between portrait and landscape orientations? As device variety proliferates, and as more and more apps are written in HTML5, responsive app layout will become more and more important and will become expected. For more information, go to www.responsiveapplayout.com and I'll put up some links there. Thanks a lot.